When our kids were infants, Emily and I at night would take them and, and lay them uh, to go to sleep in their bed. Or when they were a little bit older, we'd, we'd put them in their bed and oftentimes would have to, to stand next to them or sit at the end of their bed and, and wait for them to fall asleep. Our children liked that comfort of knowing their, their parent was nearby. I remember at times laying next to them in bed and, and singing them songs that my mom sang to me when I was a kid. Just waiting for tired little eyes to, to close so that then I could begin the task of leaving their room. And to do so, oftentimes they'd have to become like a, a stealth ninja parent, knowing where to put my foot on the floor and where not to so that the floor wouldn't creak. Because if it did, suddenly those sleepy eyes would open and I'd have to start all over again. It was neat to see that confidence as sleepy eyes began to close as children knew that their parents were, were nearby. And because of that, were able to fall asleep in complete confidence knowing their, that they were being watched over. Their parents would protect them and guard them. I think it's a sense of security that we still crave even as adults. Right? We have alarm systems that go on our homes. We might install cameras so that in the middle of the night, if I hear a bump, I can know what's going on or at least go to sleep knowing that ADT is watching over me. But in the back of our minds, we know the truth, that ADT can be fooled, that ADT can, can miss something. We know that there isn't anything that's really foolproof that can give me a real sense of security. In fact, as we get older and we experience different things, we quickly realize that a lot of companies, a lot of people can say one thing and not really follow through. Or they could say one thing and do something completely different. Which makes it difficult in times like this for us to even trust God when he speaks to us. Because many experiences in life have taught us that we can't trust what people say, we can't trust what companies say, we can't trust what governments say, so why in the world should I trust what God says? Those life experiences come from being able to to hear what someone says and then watch and see if their actions uh, match up. We can do the same with God, I suppose, and, and there be able to determine whether or not God's promises are one that we can listen to. So we could take, for example, Abraham. God made a promise to Abraham saying that he was going to have a son and through that son was going to turn Abraham's family into this great nation. And so Abraham waited patiently for God's promise to come true until one point that Abraham had to admit that it was humanly and physically impossible for him and his wife, Sarah, to have a child. And that's when God chose to keep his promise and give Abraham and Sarah a son when Sarah was 90 years old and Abraham was 100. Even though it was impossible, God kept his promise. Or you can think of those instances uh, in Abraham's, or a little bit later, when God promised to the Israelites that he was going to lead them out of slavery. Their enslavement in Egypt was still 400 years in the future. And 430 years later, God did exactly what he had promised. He, he led his people out of slavery in Egypt and into a land that he had promised to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. God kept his promise. Or you can think of the promise God gave to Adam and Eve. After they fell into sin, he promised that one of Eve's offspring would be one through whom God would destroy the work of the devil and save his people from eternal death in hell. And what did God do? He sent his one and only son, Jesus, to rescue us from sin. He sent his one and only son, Jesus, who lived, died, and rose again so that we can be absolutely certain that our sin is forgiven and that eternal life is ours. So that now, when I hear the words we do today from the writer to the Hebrews, God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. We can take great comfort and encouragement in those words. We can be absolutely certain that God is going to do exactly what he promised. Which means in the morning when I wake up, I can be absolutely confident and go into my day at peace 
and with a joyful heart because I know that my Heavenly Father is with me every step of the way, regardless of what happens in life. It also means that at night, when I close my eyes to go to sleep, I can do so with complete confidence knowing that my Heavenly Father is watching over me, guarding and protecting me even when my eyes are closed. But what about those times, those days that are especially dark? Those times in life where it seems as though God isn't there? Where it seems as though God has has left me and maybe is busy doing something else? Maybe think of it this way. Remember when you were a child on one of those dark stormy nights and and when the thunder and and lightning were flashing and, and ended up knocking the power out? And suddenly what you were confronted with was inky darkness and inability to see what's going on. And all you heard was loud thunder, maybe wind blowing outside your window, rain. And what filled your heart was fear until you heard a voice, a voice in the darkness saying, I'm right here and I'm bringing a flashlight to you. In the middle of those dark days, when it seems as though God isn't anywhere to be found, we listen as God speaks to us in his word. And he says to us, I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. So that you and I are able to say with confidence, then the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. We can be confident on even the darkest of days that my heavenly father is with me, even if I don't see how he's working. And because of that, we can say even in times like this, I will not be afraid. 